Hi everybody and welcome to today's workshop. We are very lucky today to have Earth artist Odessa Ford with us who is going to be delivering a colour explosion workshop and I am super excited for this. So I am going to um, pass straight on over to Odessa so that we can get started. Hi, welcome. Thank you all for having me and being here today. Um, this workshop is um, something that I developed through this process of mine. I'm a land artist and I work primarily in Oregon along the coast, but um, I started stone balancing a couple years ago as just a way to find some meditative um, self-reflection time. And it was such a lovely art form that I, I really um, found some peace in doing it. But I'm also a painter and I like to go a little outside the box sometimes. Um, and I wanted to work in color to these stone balances, but in a way that I wasn't painting stones and taking away from the natural beauty of the landscape. Um, and since then I've developed this process, which is really fun and very messy um, to paint the stones with, um, I use all natural vegan food coloring, um, which doesn't harm the environment. I research all my products to make sure that they're they're good and safe. Um, and, you know, they, they do wash off the stones. Um, sometimes they might stain it a little bit, but over time that just comes right off too. Um, so it's super fun. Um, so let me get right in to what you're going to need for the workshop so that you know what you need. Um, now you can do this outside if you're watching later. That's a lot of fun. You can do it outside. I actually am doing it inside today because of uh, technical reasons I needed to be inside. But what I have here is I have a pan and it's full of little pebbles and stones. Okay. It's gravel that I literally would just scooped up down by the book. Okay. And so I also have a pan of stone stones. So I'm hoping that you guys were able to gather some stones if you're watching live and you're going to do this with me today. Yay. Okay. So we've got our stones and I like to have the ones that are just for this kind of thing. I like to be able to just hold it in my hand. Okay. Um, easily. If it can't, because like I just broke both my arms in March. <laughs> so I can't comfortably hold them very well. So that's one of the reasons we have the pan. This acts as like our drip tray. And also we're going to use it when we take some photographs. So it's absolutely okay to set your stone down in here. If you want to hold it in your hand, this is the fun part. We're going to get messy. Like I said, we're going to use our hands and we're going to get messy. And then what we'll do is we're going to do about four or five stones together. And then we're going to talk about balancing them and making a composition out of it. Um, and then how we might incorporate that into a landscape. Um, now for reference, I brought, um, this is an image and I, I hope you guys can see it well. It might be a little glary. Actually, the camera's not gonna let us see it. Darn it. Oh, this background's awful. Can you see it now? There it is. Yes. Um, I have to hold it up against me or the camera blocks it out. So this is the type of thing that we're looking at. So what we're looking at is a single stone balance. We may have a base at the bottom. Um, we would want to put this, you know, in nature somewhere to photograph it. So that's also part of this workshop is to talk about composition and how do I make these images? Because it's one thing to just do it, and that's a wonderful practice, but I thought it might be good to share also how I do this how I take those photographs and make them um, into something like this, right? It's really and great so that you've chosen that picture, Odessa, because today I shared your event for a second time on our Instagram and I used that image from your Instagram page. I saw it. I did. It's lovely, isn't it? It's such a lovely synchronicity. I was like, yay, that's such a lovely picture. It's one of my favorites. It really is. Um now, the simplicity of what we're about to do may, may um, surprise you a bit. This is actually a very simple process. It's a playful process, okay? And I don't always take the picture um, at the end. What I do is I, I take photographs as I'm working, as the, the food coloring is blending and it's very liquid right? Because it's ever changing when it's in that liquid form. And that's why I like using the liquid compared to like a powder. And I do have some powdered earth pigments that I like to use 
But in order to use it in this capacity, you really would need to make it into like a liquid form of some sort. You can brush it on the stones. I've done that with like glitter powders and things too. Um, the metallic powders are lovely. But for this today, we're just gonna use a chalk powder that, that I um, did. So what I did for a white, because if your stone's not very white, let's say it's a darker stone, like this one, like I have a really dark stone. When we put the colors on here, it's, these are so concentrated. The food coloring is so concentrated in its regular form that you might not even see the color. Really, it, it's very dark. So what I do is I add a white base coat and this also, um, you can kind of see some white in the balance I showed you. That's coming from this chalk powder. And I also sometimes use a liquid white food coloring, okay? it's uh, They do make it, it's hard to find. Um, I'll see if I can find a link and post it for you guys so you know, but it is um, meant for airbrushing. And so it comes in a liquid form and I can thin it down and then it just washes away. And it's it's all, th that one is more of a starch base and, you know, things like that. So it's not going to hurt the environment either. But this one is literally just chalk, powdered chalk. And I used alcohol as a base because it holds it together better. Um, you could have asked want a question, Adessa. Yes, please. Um, so I couldn't find any powdered chalk. So I bought, so you got um, yes. I bought I was gonna chalk say that. Perfect, and I perfect. smashed it up. So what do okay. I need to put with it? You don't have to put anything with it, Sarah, if you don't want to, but you could put, um, I will tell you the process of making this liquid from that form took us about an hour to get it right. Okay. So I will tell you my trick. So you know how to do it. But for today, you can actually just rub the chalk powder. It's going to be messy. You just put it in your hand and you're just going to rub the chalk all over the rock. Okay. Um, okay and that's that the first good. step. We're just going to make the rocks white. Okay. So, um, but let me explain how we do this too. And I can send some instructions on how to make this white. We literally took in our mixer, our blender, and put the chalk sticks in and just added alcohol until we got the right consistency. Oh, I love that. And then we put it through a strainer to okay. strain out the big pieces, okay? It took us quite a bit, my husband and I, a lot of time to <laughs> engineer this white chalk powder, but it works and the alcohol holds it up together a little better than water. Um, I found with the water, it literally just, it doesn't stay where it needs to. So I'll kind of show you with mine here. Um, this, this is just a squirt bottle. I don't, can you see that? Yeah. Um, and it just pulls it in so I can literally just squirt it on um, to the stone. And in its liquid form, it's just going to make this lovely coating, okay, onto the stone. So if you guys want to coat your stones, and Sarah, how are you doing with the rubbing? Is that working okay for you? Perfect. Yeah. That's a yeah, thing. yeah, it is. It's, it gives a totally different surface finish, but I'm quite it's, enjoying it, you know? It's like gessoing your canvas if you were a painter, right? Yes. It gives it something because color needs, the reason we gesso canvas is so that color pops on the canvas. So we give it a nice bright white background because of the way the light reflects it. Um, that white gives it some depth that you don't get otherwise. So mine, I'm just gonna squirt mine on these stones and I have a bunch of different stones to choose from. So if our stones you, are oh, already oh. quite white, like this one okay. has got then some you, coating yeah, on it, can I just leave that? You can leave it, absolutely great question. The ones I have, we brought out of the river, so they're all about this color, okay. you know? And, and I, unfortunately, the last time I was out stone balancing, there were some beautiful colored stones, but I didn't think to take any of them. <laughs> so, and there were some really nice white ones, but I didn't take them either. Um, just so you know, my husband will be floating by once more. <laughs> just a floating head is all you look like with the background. It's funny. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I used this. Yeah, go Jane, ahead, just so that you know, you can unmute yourself because we're in quite a, a small group. So, you, you know, you, yeah, because yeah, Jane's put in the chat that she thinks this feels so tactile. 
Yeah. It's it absolutely. Is. I think it really is, Jane. Thank you for that comment. It, it really is. This is a hands-on exercise. Like when I am done with this, we're going to be, we're going to be really stained. Um, I do encourage people who don't like that because not everybody's in to like being colorful for days because this will yeah. stay, stain you for a few days. Okay. But, um, but, uh, in Yorkshire at home, we would say you get mucky and your hands yes. are mucky. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Um, it um, looks you fabulous. Put no, I, I would want to do it without any gloves on. Yes, that's exactly what, the way I intended is without. Yeah. Um, but when I present this um, to the public, I do bring gloves because some people don't like the mask so much. Mm. But um, and some okay, people so are allergic as well, huh? Yes, exactly, exactly. Now these, the food coloring I'm going to use today, these aren't the ones I normally use because I'm not going to be going outside with this. Um, these are just kitchen. Uh, and I thought this is probably what you guys would have, you know, you're going to have these little things of food coloring, right. That you probably got yeah. at the grocery store or the corner market. Um, and these are absolutely fine. We like to leave them though in their concentrated form. Okay. So try not to water these down. Um, the other thing I will tell you, um, is you should have some water. Um, either a spray bottle or a cup of water. Okay. All right. Yep. And and yes, perfect. 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 So I use this kind of spray bottle um, a lot when I'm out uh, doing this because if I don't like something, I just spray it off and I can start over. If we're doing this inside and we're not going to take this outside, could mm -hmm. you use like a watered down acrylic or an ink or Absolutely. you know like anything you've got anything in your studio? Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking about this white too. I was like, you know, if this doesn't work, I have some white acrylic paint. I'll just thin it down and I'll use that. It's fine. Um, really, I just kind of wanted to give alternatives for inside outside kind of applications because I do this inside quite often with paint. And um, I do those little resin sculptures and I use stones and sometimes I paint them ahead of time. So I'm using acrylic to give the same effect. So you could use watered down acrylic. It would give you the same um, or even watercolor ink. Like you said, that would work too. Um, okay, so this is my favorite stone. I, I know you guys can't see it, but this stone is so cool. Mm -hmm. I found this yesterday and um, it is so pitted. It looks like it's an old piece of like basalt or something that got um, really just tumbled around and it's almost a perfect circle. So I love this one. So I'm gonna use this one today. And I've got about like five. I'd now like to share my favorites. Is that okay? <laughs> oh yes, please do. Which so one I do you love? I found this more? hole, this one that has like a little hole in it. Oh, and that's then beautiful, perfect. Right next to it. I found this one that fits perfectly in the hole. It's like so oh, beautiful. So yeah. That's so lovely. That will make your balance so much easier, Sarah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I will tell you, as I tried to practice with this little one and balance it, it's, boy, this one's a hard one to balance. So it's going to be a challenge, but I think I can do it. Um, okay. So once your stones, and my stones are still drying a little bit, I will tell you with this liquid that I made, you kind of almost have to wait for the chalk powder to, or for the chalk to dry a little bit, because it's really wet. Uh, you can do it while it's liquidy too. It, it looks very much like an icing. It does. Yes, it is like yeah. icing, absolutely. In fact, the one, Jane, that I normally use is almost a cake icing consistency. <laughs> It's it's very sticky and um, I water it down a bit so that it's yeah. more liquid. Um, but when I pull it out and I'm first using it, it's very sticky and and um, thick. So, yeah. Uh, but this one we could just pour over. Um, it's okay to make a mess and it's okay if your chalk gets all over. Um, these little tiny pebbles in the bottom of our pan, we're going to use that. So, I am so going to do this with my grandchildren. Oh my gosh, the kids loved it at, at the last festival I did this. Um, they absolutely loved it. In fact, I think everybody loved it. It was just so much fun. Okay. So now, now I've covered my, my stones. I should put them in my tray, right? Yes, let's keep everything in your tray. I mean, you could do it wherever you want, but <laughs> we try to contain it. 
Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try and once again, I really need this camera filter off. Let me see if I can get that off again. Okay. Um, because I want to be able to point the camera towards what I'm doing and have it show up. It's okay. I'm picking seaweed off my um, pebbles because I okay. obviously didn't wash them particularly well. So, okay. so there's that. Okay. Background effects. That's what I want. Okay. None. There we go. I figured um, it out. Okay. And I, I don't. Sir, do, oh, there it is. Okay. I can flip the screen around this way. Okay. So I, I this is what I want to just be able to do. Okay, so you can guys can kind of see here, and sorry about the cat toys on the floor, um, is that, and I can move that out of the way too. Um, so I've got my stones here, right? And we're going to just start with one stone. Okay. And what you want to do is you're going to, um, and I'm going to just do it the other direction, flip my camera back around if I can. I tell you, technology sometimes doesn't work, especially with messy hands. I will tell you this, doing this with my phone, my phone has had so much food coloring on it, you guys can't even imagine. It's <laughs> always very colorful around here. Okay, so I think uh, if we do it this way, you guys can, yes, perfect, okay. So if I move that back, you guys can see these stones. So once I have the white on here, and I'm gonna use my white in conjunction with the color. Okay, and you can do this if you have the liquid, Sarah, for you, where you just rub the chalk on, if, Jane, if you did that too, um, mm -hmm. if you're uh, working along with us, um, the, the white's going to give it a lovely background effect. Um, so then just take your color, whichever one. I like to start with the lighter colors. This is a little bit of color theory. Um, and with liquid colors, uh, it's best to start light and then work dark and um, acrylic and oils if you were painting you would start with the darker colors and then work to the light but we want to try to stick with the lighter colors first um i like to do one color on each stone or just a couple colors on each stone if you get too many colors it will get muddy okay so like this one um i'm just gonna put the color on there that's all i do is i just drip it on however i like it and this is very concentrated. That's actually a yellow. So if I put that in water, it looks a little orangey, but um, if it was watered down more, it would look yellow. And then I'm gonna use green, because yellow and green go good together. Because um, you did say, sorry to interrupt, but you did say not to water them down. Is that because you get that lovely depth of color if you keep them without water? Right, you get that yeah. real depth of color. Plus we can, we're gonna add some water to get the fluidity. Ah. I okay, see, I see. So, so the colors are going to change as we add that, as we, um, I'm going to pour some white on here. And then as we do this, this stone then changes, right? And yeah. you can play with it, watch, and this is the meditative part. This is where you get to have some fun and just relax. So while you guys are doing this, I am going to be quiet unless you have questions because this is such a personal process. Um, putting the color on the stone is the part of it that I love the most. I'm um, having so much fun. Kind of yeah, so I'm gonna sit and play with mine here. Um, don't hesitate to ask any questions if you have any snags. And then if you get, I will tell you this though, before I um, get right into what I'm doing. Um, if you see a pattern or shape that you love in that moment, that's when I grab the phone and I just take a quick snapshot. If your phone has a portrait mode, um, I don't know what my Samsung does. I like the portrait mode because we can use the color point app and it takes all the background color out. That's how I get these beautiful images. Like this one is, is this just on my phone? Um, wow I, I really yeah, yeah wow. No, on my phone um and that's why I said I was going to do that too so I can show you guys um and walk you through how to maybe do this on your phone because this is just a function in my phone that takes out that background color wow and if you can get it the first time like just to use that setting so if you go into more on your phone settings in your 
in your camera settings. I'm doing it now. Have, yeah, let's see. Let's try it because I want to take a picture of mine. Um, oh, where'd you guys go? There you are. Okay. Um, okay. So if I go into my camera settings here, I have more on the right and there's a portrait mode. And so when I use the portrait mode, um, what that does and what that's going to do, and I don't, I don't know if it's going to let me scare. I wish it, is there a way to share the screen here, Sarah? Um, um, no, I don't think so. I don't okay. know. Actually, That's okay. I'll post it. I think I can post it though. I, I can post it. So what I do is I take the snapshot and then before I edit it, um, it should give me the, the option to change that background if I want. So that's why I like that. So if I go into the camera setting and I go to portrait mode, take the snapshot. And, and for this too, you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, that you've got it set properly to um, right above the stone, because we can crop it. But the, the stone or whatever you're taking the photo needs to be right in the middle. And then when, when you uh, pop it up on your phone, you should see where it says change background effect. If, you're, if you've got a Samsung that works, I'm not familiar with the iPhone options, but in my Samsung, I can just change the background effect and do that color point. Wow. And then when I apply that, then it allows me to edit. And then I can crop the image. And what I'll do here is see if I can, I just took this picture. It's not great, but it'll work. Um, see if I can get it posted here in the comments. I don't know if I can get it in there or not, but we'll see. Do you have at the uh, bottom of your um, screen, the share screen button, the green button? Oh, yeah, let me see here. If you have that, it might work even on a phone. I've never tried it on a phone. I don't know. On the phone, it's so weird, Sarah. Can you see me again? No. Not to, no. Uh, what happened? Okay. I feel like I need to update and just say that I'm having there so much fun with, <laughs> okay, with now my liquids. I don't know what that was. That was weird. Okay. So what I was saying is if you position your phone just like this, right? Just yep. over the stone and then you take that image, then that's where we, we want to make sure that we've got like a good, um, uh, that right in the center and that it's in focus. That's important. Um, the rest of it, we can crop out later, but that's what you're looking for is this, this shot. And I'll show you as I kind of do this, let me, I'm going to use a little purple in here because I don't know, it just seems fun. Um, if I, let's say I add this purple, right? You can see it. It looks really dark, right? It does. But as I add the white in, then it turns this lovely purple. And I can just add a little more and see these star effects that you get. Mm. That one almost looks like an eyeball. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. My stones are so pretty. Yay. Okay. Can you show us too? Um, yeah, I reckon so. Hold on. Let me just let me just, just pick it up. Like this is where we get messy, because right, I'm gonna pick this stone up. And, and, oh no, because I have the background you can't. Oh, I know. Uh, you have to kind of put it in front of yourself if you want to show, I think. Oh, oh no, there we go. There we go. Oh, how pretty. Oh, I love it. Mine got a little dark. So this is where the water comes in. I don't like that. It turned into kind of a mud color. Do you see that? Because of the green. Mm. Um, 
I don't really like that. So I just simply take the water and wash it off and start again. So that's cool. how easy, and that's how quickly that washes off. So before I leave any type of stone balance that I do out in nature, I wash the stones and place them back. Um, they may end up like this a little bit where they're just a little stained for some time, but that comes off over time. So, okay, I'm going to do another one here. This one I'm going to put up a little higher. So this is where you get to start stacking your stones too, if you've done one. <laughs> if you're brave and you want to pile them up. I do, I do. So I'm going to use a little orange on this bottom one. Oh, my birdie loves it when I do these. I'm absolutely filthy already. Like, absolutely. Oh, really? Like you no, because here's the fun thing is too. I like to take these pictures with it in my hand. Yes, I've seen in them. They're great. Do that in order to really truly do that well, you really just got to get in it and play and really get it all over yourself because that's the whole point. And so for this one, I'm gonna hold it in my hand as much as I can. I don't have my braces on, so it's a little harder. Oh, this stuff is really liquidy. Whoa. It's funny, isn't it? Because like some stuff is a lot more liquid than others. And I'm not really. It has to do with the, the pigment, I think, because um, darker colors are thinner. Yeah. And so I think that's why. Like my red is like, I look like I'm bleeding out right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the red. I told you I was going to get messy. Oh, oh, no. There went the white dress. <laughs> it's done in. It's already done. Okay. So I think this is lovely. So I'm going to try to get a picture of this. I don't know if I can. Oh. Okay. I want to show you guys. I'm going to flip my camera around again. So do you see? Oh, I can't get my hand straight because I did a head surgery on this one, but. Isn't that so cool? Yes. And I love the patterns. You got these. What's that? I love the patterns, you know? They're like Isn't really unintentional, but really beautiful. Well, and if you remember back, Sarah, to those images I did for um for Clash yeah. last year. This mm. I just used um oops, sorry, my camera won't flip. Um, I just used one larger stone in some of those, that big blue one that I did. That was just one large stone. And I played with that stone for like an hour. Yeah. Um, and that's the fun part too, is that this is very, it's messy, but it's also fun. So I'm going to use this one for my base. And then I'm going to start building up my tower, if you will. Now you guys can do your stone separately if you want. I'm gonna do it while it's stacked, which is a little different. And it adds just a little level of um, complexity here because you've got to keep that balance as you're doing this. So ah. I'm gonna build I'm gonna build this balance up as we're doing this. So okay. Wow. Now the next one I think I'm gonna go with blue. All right, I am. I am all in now. I am all in. I am. You are. I'm if you in. if you don't end up like this, you're not all in. That's what I say. <laughs> oh my gosh! And I have to thank Sarah for the idea of this. <gasps> now, do you guys see what's happening here? Can I show you? Yes. What's happening here. So beautiful. Um, you, do you see what's happening? The stone on the bottom is now getting the color from the top. And this, this in this, you're getting these just beautiful variations on the sides of the stones. It just goes wherever it wants, which is lovely um, because that's what we want. I mean, it's very fluid and beautiful. This one, it's, I think, it's, is done. It's very marbled. It's It's got a, a feeling of its own. I, I love the shading on it and the way it just flows down onto the other one. It's beautiful, really beautiful. Yes. 
Well, thank you for that. I, I actually stumbled upon this. I will tell you a little bit how I did this <laughs> process. This is one of those things that the, some of the most glorious things in life are accidents. Mm -hmm. um, I was practicing, I was going to practice this application because I had a large scale earthscape on the sand um, that was the Pink Floyd prism. And I wanted to do the rainbow. <laughs> and I didn't quite understand how I was going to do this application. And I got just huge amounts of food coloring and I had gallon buckets and sprayers and all sorts of stuff. And how, what was the best application? So I wanted to practice. So I went out and as soon as the color hit the stones, I went, oh. And I was like, that's gorgeous. And so then I started playing. And those images are the ones that I submitted for Clash last year. They were the very first time I had ever done it. Oh, yes. they were, oh I, I, remember talking to, I, I remember talking to you last year. Yeah. And say, wow, I know, but wow, you've you've just wow, yeah. I'm gonna have to have a go at this. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it's so much fun. I can stop. I never stop playing with it. You know, it's just it's it's so much fun. Okay, so the next stone I'm gonna do is this bigger one. Uh, let's see if I can get it to balance. Yay! <gasps> I. I don't know how I do this. It's so easy for me anymore. I When I first started doing these, it took me 20 minutes to get that to stand there. I think once you do it enough with the stone balancing, honestly, you just feel it, the center in the stone in your hand. And so you can literally just kind of know where to set it. And then I'm going to add a little more white because I like the fluidity of the white. And you can kind of see how that that comes down around it. And I think I'm gonna go with a different blue. I have two different blues here. I don't want to show up. I'm currently like five stone high. Is it? Sarah, show oh. us. <laughs> you wanna take a picture, Tara? You can and and post them too. But oh yes, we my god! Oh, how pretty! <laughs> yes. You're so excited. Isn't yeah. this so fun? Okay, so this I I wish you guys could see this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta show you this. I gotta show you. Okay, okay. See if I can get do you see that? Oh. Do you see what that's doing? Ooh. Isn't that cool? Super cool. Mm. And this is this is where sometimes I'll just video the whole process so that I get all of it. Um, and then um, you can, if you like, just add in a little water that'll help move that color down. This is actually turning out quite well. <laughs> Messy though. Okay, so now the, with the last two stones here, I'm gonna tell you this, this is where they come into my hand. Because the last two or three stones I want to put on here, I'm afraid if I try to balance it and then color it, I'm not going to be able to get it the way I want it. And because I want this one to be different than all the others, I'm going to actually do this one in my hand. So, Odessa, is it all about the feel of the stone? Ooh. What's that, dear? Is, that, uh, is it about the feel of the stone? You know, I in your hands? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see, I just knocked mine over, so. Um, but yeah, it's it's very tactile. It's really grounding Yeah. Um, to have it in my hand, you know? And and this is the other thing. It's it's almost like when you were a child and you finger paint, you know? It's, yes. There's something so innocent about it, so lovely, so creative, and it's messy, and it just kind of taps into our childlike nature. <laughs> um, you know, this desire that we have to play. And so that's why I love this so much because it literally, I could sit out by the water and do this for hours and hours and hours and never get tired of it. And if I don't like it, I just wash it off and start again. Um, now with balancing the stones, it's all about the, see, I did so much better when I first put it up there because I found the balance right away. Um, Sometimes they'll fall over and they fall into the water and wash themselves off. And that's disappointing. Um, so it's, it's definitely a work in progress kind of thing. And 
honestly, I don't think I've ever found any art medium or that I enjoy this much. All the things I do, I enjoy this more than any other. So. Okay. All right, I've got this lovely like neon green. I'm really curious to see what this looks like. You know what, it looks a awful lot like the regular green, um, but that's okay. <laughs> and I will tell you less is more sometimes, if you guys can see this, this is just a little couple drops of green with that white, that's it. That's all that there is. It looks very similar to, you know, like a glass marble. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. All right. Let me see if I can get a mask. And this is where the messiness begins. Well, not that I wasn't already messy. But... <gasps> okay. So I've got four. Now my goal is to get this wobbly round one on top. So we'll see. Good luck. <laughs> I know, right? I'm I'm really it's I will tell you too, I think that sometimes the liquid helps the stones stay together a little better too. I've heard stone bouncers say that that the water helps um keep them together and instead of sliding off. I've noticed that with dry stones, sometimes they'll slide off each other because there's no surface tension to keep them together. Um, Fun funnily enough, when I you I mix media and I know if I add in a fluid into something that it's it, it sort of adheres better for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know the fabric and the paint and the and the other elements that it's the oddest sensation and you tend to feel it under your fingers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a good. That's such a good description, Jane. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yes, it makes so much sense. Ooh. Okay, I'll have to take a picture of my dress when I'm done too. <laughs> yes, it can be an artwork of its own. Well, I'll tell you that one that I wore for my performance piece is permit pink now, and you wouldn't think that because I used so much green. But the um the red and the pink dyes tend to stain more. So yeah. um, and so that that pretty well stained for a while um for eternity. I will <laughs> tell you too, I want to tell you a secret about that dress. That was my wedding dress. Oh. Um it was my original wedding dress. It's not the one I wore for my ceremony. Okay, but, but I had a Claws and it was so beautiful that I thought I'd repurpose it. So, all right, I love I got that. It Yay! You'll make it look so easy. Oh. It's true. I've been doing it a while. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay, so I've got my hands all. This is fun. Okay, so for this one, what I'm gonna do now, this is where the real fun happens. Get to see if you can manage to do this without knocking over your balance. And this is where it really gets fun. I start pouring the color over it. And this is where it gets so playful, watch. So this is where the magic happens. Okay. You're so brave with it. I feel like I'm gonna ruin it by doing this, but I mean, I'm going for it, but. Go for it. Oh, it's so fun. If, if you've done something you don't like, stop doing that thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is what I've learned. Sometimes you do make a mistake and you're like, oh, I don't like that. But that's where, you know what? It's, I used to tell my students, when they get upset with something like they were working on a painting or a drawing that didn't come out well. And I'd be like, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah. You know, let's, yeah, start, absolutely. let's, let's throw it out and start again. So if yeah. you mess it up, we can do it again. You know, we yeah. can start all over. I, I so. think the element of play comes through very well. 
Oh, and I just love it. Now I will tell you when this is in the water and I keep doing this, it just flows out into the stream and it's gorgeous. Yeah. So gorgeous. It's so mesmerizing. I can sit and watch that for hours because it keeps dripping down into the water and the water takes and disperses it. It's so cool. And this is why it's important for you to have the, the natural... Right, because I'm putting it in the waterway. And if I was not putting it in the waterway, that would be different. But because I am putting this into, like, on the beach, if I'm close to the water, I know that, you know, potentially that's going to go out into the ocean or if I'm in a stream or a river. I want to make sure that I'm protecting the environment. Um, so that's where I really only use those all-natural vegan colors. Um, I, I have some I like, and I mix my own. So I buy the powdered food coloring um, and then I um, uh, I mix it into the bottles. So it that way I know for certain that product was made by me yeah. and I know that it's not going to hurt anything. Um, and so for, for those applications, I do mix my own. Um, I do have some little sample bottles of liquid that I like every once in a while, too, that I found. Um, if I can find those again, I'll show you. Um, I've just ran out of them. Um, but they're really tiny little bottles, and they're just sample colors. Hmm. But they're like 32 in there. And they're so much fun because there's such a huge assortment of colors. You can really make any color you want. Okay. So now, now that I have my balance, I'm happy with it. Um, I'm still going to play with it a little bit, but I'm trying to get some white on the bottom stone, which isn't so easy. There we go. It's coming down. I think I'm happy with it. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm not. <laughs> Need to add a little yellow in there. Do you and ever do this, Adessa, with um, sand underneath instead of gravel? Yes, um, and I will, if on the back of this, I can send you one of these too. I was gonna send you um, something anyways. Do you see here where it's on the sand in this picture? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I do the um, sand drawings and then I do the, the balances in them. Um, I have noticed though, if you do it right on the sand, you get lots of drip marks. So this is why I say, if you have a pan with you to do it, and then bring your stones to wherever you're going to place them. That's how I keep it nice and clean. If I'm going to take photographs and uh, for a fine art reason, um, I'm going to lift the stone. These I lifted and placed here. So I colored these separately and then I made the installation separately. So I did not color them right where they stood. Um, and that's really important if you're doing on sand because you can get color everywhere. I've learned that's some tough lessons with it. That's very considered. You Did know, you say you consider it, Jane? No, you've you've. It's very considered. You've spent time thinking about how oh, yes. how and it visually it's going to look when you've placed it where it is, but also that it looks right in the elements, you know, in the area that you've chosen. So you can't just do it and think it's going to look fabulous. You've actually considered the process and how it will look, the finished look, which takes a lot of practice. It does. It does. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, if I were to, because if you, I know you, if you have your pan there, you could probably see, but when I look at mine, like these stones wow. below, yeah. they're, they're kind of a mess. And that wouldn't, for me, that, I mean, it's beautiful, but if I was going to, to submit this for a gallery show i want it more clean yeah yeah so that's where we can take these pebbles and we can start manipulating them um what i like to do is just kind of take a handful of them and in my hand i'll color like let's say i'll just put white and just maybe one color Oops, knocked it over. Darn it. I worked so hard for that one. Okay, I'll put that back in a minute. 
<laughs> I knock them over more than I build. <laughs> That's part of the fun. You know, when I first yeah, started doing this, it would, it would be frustrating for me. This teaches you patience. It would be so frustrating to me that this would fall and it would, I'd have to start over. And I thought, you know what? This is a practice. This is like a spiritual practice. And, you know, treating it as such, you can be so forgiving of all those little mistakes because you know that it's just playful and fun and it's okay. Yeah. So I try not to get too hard on myself. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start piling up some stones around it that I'm gonna color specifically around it. So I'm gonna to try to remove, I've got sand in here too. I'm gonna to try to remove some of these stones away from the base of this without knocking the whole thing over. And that color is gonna go all the way down. So, cause unless you're in a stream or, or whatever, it's gonna go all the way down in your pan. So as you're doing that, you're going to see all this color pooling at the bottom. That's just fine. I'm going to put stuff right over it. And then what I do is these little stones that I have, these ones that are in the pan, I'm going to use these to, to um, make a little base or, or a little focal point around it. So, ooh, they're awfully wet. And I kind of like that they look natural. So I'm not going to add white to these because I really kind of like the natural look of just the color on them pebbles. I love your face, Sarah. <laughs> well, I'm not working on pebbles. I'm working on sand. And so I'm just trying to figure out, like, okay. Ooh. Okay. what to do. Let me help you. Okay, let me help you. So do you have a water bottle or a spray bottle? I have both. Okay. So two things you can do. Um, I'll tell you two, two or three different ways you can do it. The way I would do it, Sarah, is take your sand and put it in a cup and mix the food coloring right into the sand to make a colored sand. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you are literally making a colored sand. And um, then you can spread it out where you want it. So like um, we did this at the last festival. We used the colors, uh, my colors in the sand to do a full scale, huge earthscape. And literally all we did was take a bucket and put the food coloring right in the sand and mixed it up and made the just one color for each thing. So if you wanted to do a couple different colors, you could mix it a little differently. If you're doing it right in your pan, if you put the color on the sand, it's just going to sink. Yeah. Right. It's going to stay right where you put it. So I would suggest making, mixing it up a little colored first, or you can spray it on the sand too. But I have found mixing the, the color actually into the sand and then spreading it is easier. Okay. Okay. So what I had started doing is I've like, because I did all of my pouring and everything in the sand. And so the sand is actually quite colored. It's just okay. quite, like you say, it's just quite um in one spot. So I have right. like a little paintbrush and I'm just kind of mixing it in spots. Yes, yes you could. Um, You could also remove your stones and mix it all together. And then, but if you like where your stones are, see, I would do that. I would, I would move mine, but if you're not as, so like, this is sand right here, Sarah, that I have right here. This yeah. is just sand. So if I took, I'm going to use the blue cause it's handy and it's wet right now. So it's going to look pretty dark, but if I mix that color into my sand, you can see it just makes a really dark blue sand now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And I can use this around my my um balance too and i am going to use a little of that because i think it looks pretty cool <laughs> and you just sprinkle it you can do whatever you want here this is your artwork here so and i got it everywhere so
And I got a little on the balance, so I'm just going to wash that off. Okay. Add a little more. You ought to just do videos of this. It's so satisfying to watch. <laughs> you know, I do a lot, like when I'm sitting out, I'll video record it and post them, yeah. like little reels and stuff. But I thought about doing it live because I, I really think people would quite enjoy doing this along with me or, or just watching. It's very... Yeah, I think you're right. Do you have any tips, Atessa, on um, knowing like trustworthy sources for environmentally safe food diets? Yeah, um, I will send up. I do. I don't know the company that I use right offhand. Um, I will look them up and I will send that information to you. I have one. It's a U.S. based company, though, um, and they're the ones that sell those powdered dyes. Okay. And they also have like a, a package that is like a an assortment. So if you want to just try out different colors, then you can. Um, yeah. You can order the bulk powdered uh, vegan coloring. Um, I do that. Sometimes I'll order bulk because especially like if I'm doing a big thing like on the beach or whatever, um, I'll order it bulk. But I do have a couple companies that I use. So I will make sure to pass those along to you guys. I had hoped to find them ahead of time, but I will tell you, I was a little disorganized. So, do not worry. Well, if you share them after, after, I can <laughs> add them onto the recording. You know, so they'll be in the okay. they'll be in the text on the recording. Absolutely, I can certainly do that. So my sand is like psychedelic. It's really cool. Very cool. Okay, and with like with mine. I'm happy with it, the way it looks. I've done some work around the base to just kind of make it more uniform and kind of, since I use so many different colors, um, sometimes I'll use just the white, like like I did here on this one, uh, just the white and the blue here because it was such a lovely contrast. But I noticed this gravel I'm using is very dark when it's wet. So um, I'm not going to get the same effect as I will there. So. Oh my goodness, if you guys could see me right now. Woo. I know you can see me, but you can't see all the sand all over me. The AI thing on my phone is telling me that I'm taking pictures of food as I am taking pictures of my stones. That's how tasty the sculpture is looking. Lovely. <laughs> I will tell you, sometimes I do use the food. If your phone has like a food option, I use that one too when I take pictures of these because it really is, the camera's already set up to take this lovely little photo of this one thing, right? Yeah. Um, usually a plate-sized yeah. item. So you don't have to do a lot with the camera. I will tell you most everything I do is through my phone and through applications on my phone. Yeah. All, most of my editing is done right on my phone. Um, I do have those programs on my computer, but I just, the ease of it on my phone. I have one that's called a uh, background eraser too. Yes, I use background eraser. I love it. Oh my goodness. All of the fun things that I've done, my, even my collaborative piece for, for metamorphosis, I use the background eraser and put that all together into a collage. Like, I love that so much. And especially if you're doing something like this inside and I want to take a picture of that, I really want to get rid of the rest of this background. Um, and so that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about as far as composition with this is um, I take photographs from every angle because you never know <laughs> which one's going to be the best. And I will also tell you when I'm outside, a lot of times I'm messy, right? I've got stuff everywhere. My phone camera's probably got a smudge on it um, because I've touched it. Or there's such a glare on the screen, I cannot see what I'm actually taking a picture of. Yes. And so, so I always um, 
Well, when I was in college, you know, they tell you in photography, you know, take three shots. Take three shots. You want to fix things and take three because you know that, that you're going to get the shot you want. Um, but with this, I try to take two or three from each angle just so I'm making sure that I get the very best shot. Sometimes uh, the top will be gone. It will be a beautiful picture, but it won't be the whole thing. So that's disappointing when that happens. So that's why I take so many pictures. Um, so what I'm going to do here to get this um, framed, I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to try to get a photograph. I think my camera might shut off when I do this. So bear with me here. So for me, I, I'm going to come at every angle and try to get, oops, sorry. You guys get to see my house. Okay, so I like this right here. And I also like it from above. Oh, I've not. I am now going to look from above. Oh, how did I not think to look from above? Yes, this is where we got to get up and around and look at it from all different angles. All different angles. And this is where that background eraser comes in handy. It's going to come in so handy is because you'll be able to, to remove the background and just get your image. I think my camera's shutting off as I'm taking the photographs, so. It is, but that's okay. I'm also in photography mode. I am snapping away. Okay, okay, good. That's where we all, hopefully we should all be about that spot there with some, taking some pictures. If you guys want, and you're amicable to this, I am willing to relocate this outside and set this up outside. Um, since I'm using my phone, I can certainly do that. Um, we have a lovely little creek behind our house here that I can just walk it outside and we can set it outside so you guys could see it out there if you'd like. That's fun. I have no idea how you can balance that and take it outside. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. I'm back. So no, I literally can just carry it outside with me. And um, I will not No, So here's the thing. Um, I would not carry it balanced like this unless I was just going a foot or two. So in order to do that, I'll just take the, the stones down carefully oh, or not carefully. They'll just do what they want. And we can carry these out and I can carry them back right out to this little stream. And we can take some pictures outside too. I think that would be lovely, don't you? Hi, okay, so we're outside now. Um, I have just walked behind my little apartment building here and I'm sitting in the grass and I brought everything out with me. You can see I've got my stones and then I actually have the stones that I colored as well as um, the colors so that I can kind of work on this a little bit and to make that final composition. Um, as you can see, I'm very colorful right now. Yay, isn't that beautiful? This is the part I love. This is the part I love is actually getting it right out in nature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to place these stones into a pile, the, the pebbles. Um, so any of the gravel, sand, or anything like that, that's what I'm going to use for the base. And then um, I'm going to do the balance on top. Um, now the first thing I'm going to do is kind of prep this area um, so that you guys can see. I'm going to flip that around here. Um, oops, go. Oh. Okay, so you can kind of see this is my view. And I've got this beautiful bridge in the um, back, and I really like this view right here is what I was thinking of. So I can put my stone balance right here. If you can see right and, here, um, I'll take my photographs. So what I'm gonna do is, okay, I'm gonna just put this here so you guys can, I can talk to you while I work, and then I will, I will show you what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna take these, stones and they're just going to go right into a pile. This is going to be the base. Okay, so I hope you guys can see. Hi. Okay, 
So I've got my stone here, and then I'm going to just build this balance up um, one at a time here. Okay. Now I will tell you, I have a little a little problem here with the camera shutting off, so I missed some of it, so I'm kind of starting again for you all. But I'm just placing the stones here ever so gently to get my balance. Okay. And then now this is that little rolly round rock that I had. Um, and you can see it's a little um, round. So it's naturally, I think it's just gonna set like this. But well, let's see if we can get it to just sit. Oh, no. Little adjustments, little adjustments. And if it doesn't work, we start again. <laughs> okay, let me take that one off. There we go. Take that off. Finds its balance again. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Get right in the way, don't I? Up stone there we go okay so as you guys can see I have put together my little balance try to get that and I've I've balanced everything here I'm just gonna add a little more color a little more color um, we've got this lovely backdrop here isn't it lovely very pretty okay and then, um, so now, as you can see, this is where I kind of start to, um, start to develop my composition, right? Um, and so this is at the point where I would be photographing this. Being here with me, um, for spending some time with me. I uh, really, truly appreciate it. Um, it's Odessa Ford Arts and Design. Um, and then www.artistodessafor.com if you'd like to see more. And of course, visit the Lucuna Festivals page as well.